Oh, it's really great to be here. These are the kind of people I like to talk to. So um, about last February, Cisco joined a very interesting open source project called OpenStack. And I'm sure many of you know about it. You've been reading about it. And I thought it'd be good to sort of talk about some of our motivations and what got us into this uh, today. So what, what's interesting about this sort of the time period that we're in cloud computing now is that I think we're in this like builder phase. Uh, and in fact, I relate that very strongly to another well-known movement. And it's great to be here at O'Reilly Conference because it's all about makers, all about builders and doing it yourself. As you actually think back to the early stages of the PC revolution, that's how that started as well, the Homebrew Computer Club. And so instead of working on you know, Altair systems and, and building your own motherboards and everything else, that's what, that's what you had to do at that time. And that's what we're having to do now in terms of dealing with the web, except we're doing it at basically warehouse scale. So in fact, I think the, the do-it-yourself um, movement or whatever has really been followed by, by some of the best. And most of you in this room are a part of that community. And you've had to take this approach because, in fact, the problems that you're dealing with are at such a scale that none of the existing technology worked for you. Everything moved to a different kind of an architecture model. And so one way to characterize this, I think there is this architectural battle going on. Uh, traditionally, people in the enterprise in traditional kind of data centers talked about vertically scaling, and so we built very large SMP machines, for example. Uh, there was HA failure and clustering going on because things were organized around transactional kinds of, of, re of requirements. And we ended up also building very application-specific infrastructure. So you end up actually building these kind of micro-architectures for each application you were building. You scale that out to a, a large number of applications, and all of a sudden, your data center is tremendously inefficient, and there's no way to get it back. The web, on the other hand, took a very different approach. It did a scale-out architecture. It took a very small number of computers and scaled them out. And the difference, really, with the web is also characterized by the fact that in large-scale web applications, we're actually running a very small number of services over a very large number, thousands and thousands of machines, which is just the opposite that you've seen in the enterprise. And we're information-centric, and that we're built on commodity systems, by and large. And a big, big component of this, because you need to be able to do it yourself, has been open source. And so what we're seeing now is applying this uh, to a cloud platform in terms of infrastructure of the service. So what I wanted to just touch upon here was like thinking about now how you build a cloud platform, an infrastructure as a service kind of platform, and, and using open source for that. So when you think about it, what the customers are trying to do, of course, is to avoid being locked into one platform. So there's a lot of talk about standardization of our APIs and things like that, which I'm kind of reticent to, to, to really push forward, because right now I think we're very, very early in, the, in this phase. And I'd like to see a lot more experimentation so we really lock things down. But the customers have this need, because they'd like to have a common platform that can be run across multiple vendors. And of course, they also need to be able to move their data in and out, because it's their data after all. From the service provider point of view, they're trying to serve many, many tenants, over thousands of servers. So even though each tenant may be running an actually a very small application, because they're multiplied by the number of tenants, they have a web app. And that's what a cloud platform is really about. And Amazon's really led the way in this. And it's great to hear the talks about that here. It also needs to be very, very easy to operate. At this kind of scale, and that's why we're talking about DevOps, it's really you're running this application, which is your cloud platform. And that has to be completely automated for you to be able to handle it at scale. And at the same time, then, this gives an opportunity for actually some of this differentiation to occur in that industry in terms of focusing on different things, such as support, reliability, availability, and new services. And most importantly, they need to be able to, in terms of differentiation, roll out new services, roll out new environments for developers in order to attract their customers. So this is where open source, I think, has a tremendous advantage. Uh, first of all, we can leverage the work of a growing number and large community of developers. It works across multiple uh, infrastructures, hardware infrastructures. And that it's both possible now to, since it's open source, run this at a service provider and also run it in-house. So all the talk that we have about how we're going to be cloud bursting and moving applications from one data center out into the cloud, it helps if you have a common platform. And it helps even more if it's a common platform that you can now customize to fit your individual needs. 
and add additional services. So what is OpenStack? For those of you who haven't heard about it, it originated at NASA uh, and it, at, on the Nova side, the uh, compute service itself and Rackspace came along and actually decided to open source their, their software infrastructure and contributed their cloud files for that. So this has now been driven by an open community process and there's three main projects. There's a compute project, there's an image service project and a storage project. OpenStack also, remember, runs across multiple hypervisors. It sits above the hypervisor, so we can get the maximum amount of compatibility here. And there's been a, success, a series of releases. The current one is Cactus, which was released this last April. So, sorry for the delays here. So, and right now, we're seeing about 60 companies that are involved in, in this OpenStack community. And the most recent conference was back this last April. But the heart of this is really around this thing called blueprints, which you think of these as proposals, architectures, that people are coming together and they're proposing, what about if we were to do this? What if we were to do that? I want to have a different way to place virtual machines when they're requested. I want to be able to, to change perhaps the way the storage is allocated. Uh, we're at the early, early stage of this, and that's what the motivation for this talk is actually to try to get all of you interested in contributing your ideas, because this is now an open source cloud computing platform we can actually own and we can actually uh, chart the future for. So Cisco's participation in this is really coming from, first of all, we're hearing interest in our customers. Obviously, at Cisco's size, a lot of our customers are now looking at OpenStack and beginning to run it both in-house and also in the service provider world looking at this. More than anything else, though, I think it's really trying to contribute and learn from this community. I think you're going to start seeing a new Cisco start to emerge here where we really are much more involved with the external community and we truly want to advance the state of the art in cloud computing. What we've been contributing is actually some of the network expertise, the internet expertise that has accumulated over the years inside of Cisco, the industry support for this, and code. And that's perhaps the, most, perhaps the biggest change and actually it's very interesting within Cisco to see how that change is taking place. The idea that we're going to be now doing development in this project in the open on the web itself. So the work to date has been looking at something, first putting OpenStack on our systems, the UCS systems, and also proposing how we might think about networking. Now this really comes about from a previous experience I had running Sun Cloud and designing that. Uh, this was an effort several years ago at Sun for us to build essentially an Amazon-style public cloud for a Java developer community. And what we were looking at it, we were asking some of the questions, well, how, do, how are real applications built? And how much can we really start to think about having a virtualized data center? That's where I think we're really trying to go. But how do we avoid taking all of the baggage of an existing data center into this virtualized world? What we thought though was what most was missing in the current implementations, however, was this notion of being able to create network topologies. If you think of different applications, you want to be able to say, well, perhaps my database should not have a public IP address. I want to have a multi-tier kind of application, or I might have completely different kind of technologies and, for example, have internal load balancing taking place within the topology itself. So those are the kinds of things that we look forward to being able to talk about as we're looking at OpenStack. So what the proposal was actually about was let's make, in addition to a compute service and a storage service, which developers have APIs to in terms of requesting resources, what if they had a networking service as well? So in addition to getting virtual machines or getting virtual storage, you might also get virtual network segments. And what would you start to do with that? What would those virtual network segments look like? So the, and from an API point of view, you can think about it as, well, create virtual network segments with the, using a REST interface with these following properties. I would like this network segment perhaps to have L2 semantics. This other network segment, I might want to be able to be able to get statistics back to understand how the network is performing. All of those things start to become possible when you think about having a network service as a part of your, your cloud platform. Of course, we're not the only ones with this idea. And in fact, going into the April uh, summit, there were other companies that were thinking about the same thing. So between Rackspace and Citrix and Nucera, um, Medeco, and, and others such as Intel, we came together with different proposals and during that summit over about a three or four day period, 
many, many hours of discussion, talking about what were the right abstractions, what were the basic things we wanted to be able to do, how could we make it simple for people, and also make it so that the operators themselves could expose the kind of value that they wanted to. And we came up with the unified plan. And that would, plan was called quantum. We decided to start with the most basic possible notion of a network, essentially a wire, so that you could create a virtual wire and that on this wire you could now attach virtual machines and you could also attach services. And we could also then talk about the semantics of the wire, like I say, is it L2 semantics or L3? So we're starting with something which is L2 and we will take it forward from there. And upon that you will then be able to attach, like I said, virtual machines or new networking services. Because the main point of this is actually to try to really open up the floodgates to let people invent new network-centric services. So if you think about what you might be able to do if you really were able to express some idea in terms of the network topology, now we can talk about that in an abstract sense and now let the underlying infrastructure figure out how best to place that. So you might want to be able to say, I want to place these two virtual machines so that they're very close together, or these two are very far away or these should be actually front-ended by a service such as a load balancer. The implementation underneath that can take care of what those things might be. And so when we started working through how we actually do this, we had to come up with the issue about how do we uh, avoid the full complexity uh, projecting forward. We decided then to make the service in factually in two parts. The top part is the abstraction. What are the basic elements that a developer cares about? The bottom part is actually a plug-in architecture where we can have different implementations done by different vendors and different service providers which would meet those abstractions. And by together, we would be able to have the service that we would like to have. So I would like to just close in saying I think that I'd like you all to take a look at OpenStack and that really start to think about this as being a platform for innovation. This will allow those of us who are building clouds to experiment with different kinds of services and then being able to differentiate. Some will focus on making the UI easier to use. Some will be able to affect where placement, how you do aggregation or how you do affinity between virtual machines and so forth. And others might be able to say, I want to be able to have my network segments tell, maintain an SLA and alert me when the SLA on that network is, is violated. So with that, I'm almost on time here, and thank you very much, and here's where you can go for more resources.